Hello everybody. Um, today we're going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, the title is Paul's Ministry to the Gentiles. Start with verse 1. For this reason I, Paul, am a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. You may have heard of the administration or the ministry of the grace of God or the favour of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I've written briefly already, by which when you read it you may understand my knowledge of the mystery of Christ, which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, how the Gentiles are fellow, fellow heirs and fellow members and partakers or sharers of the promise in Christ by the gospel. Now let me just explain that. Paul, again, reminding us, reminding uh, the, the church of Ephesus that it was by the grace of God, by the favour of God, that he received a revelation, a divine download of information directly from God the Father to make known what is the mystery. Now, the mystery is the gospel, because as we see throughout the Old Testament, the prophets would prophesy and, and they would speak uh, just little bits here and there about the coming of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And about the good news that would come. But the prophets only saw it in, in little snatches here and there. They only saw, saw little bits of it. It's a bit like watching the movie. And you like watch a little bit near the beginning, a little bit near the end, a little bit near the middle. And you're sort of thinking, this is like a puzzle. I can't quite figure out what is going to happen. I've got a rough idea. But God revealed it to Paul. How it was all going to come together and how the puzzle or the mystery of the gospel was going to be made known to him. He says in other generations, verse 5, this was not made known to the sons of men. See, the prophets in the Old Testament, they didn't know. And they looked forward to the day, as we uh, see in another verse in the Bible, it says that they looked forward to that day when they may, they may understand it for themselves. It was revealed to Paul, it was revealed to the apostles. And this mystery was how the Gentiles would become fellow heirs and members and sharers of the promise in Christ. And so in the Old Testament, um, people wouldn't know clearly and obviously that Gentiles would be brought into the kingdom of God and brought into the family of God and the household of God. That wasn't that made that clear. Although when we look at it now, in hindsight, we can look back at Isaiah and then we can see certain verses in there speak about the Gentiles praising God and so forth. Verse 7 it says, Of this I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. To me, the very least of all the saints, this grace, this favour was given to preach to the Gentiles the incomprehensible riches of Christ and to reveal for all people what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. Now, even, even, even with a modern translation like this, it's still, it, it's still quite puzzling, you know. It's only due to like over 30 years, 32 years of reading the Bible, okay. 32 years of reading the Bible, me, that is. And reading it and using Bible dictionaries and, and, and concordances and reading it and then learning about culture and the history and everything else, that you can understand it. Right, yeah, I'll get what he's saying now. Okay? But if you was just to read that for the very first time, you wouldn't have a clue what it's talking about because I didn't. Um, it, it took me a long time to get a grip of the Book of Romans, the Book of Hebrews, uh, especially and some of the other letters. The Gospels, that was, that was a bit easier for me, a bit more straightforward. But the letters, I mean, even Peter the Apostle said some of the things that Paul writes are hard to be understood, and some people twist what he says. Peter said some people twist what Paul says to their own destruction because they don't understand what Paul is saying. So that is the whole point of these, these Bible readings, chapter by chapter, and almost verse by verse, is to explain each chapter, and I can't explain absolutely everything, because I don't know everything, okay? But I can, I can expound to you what I do know, and this isn't any denominational preference, as you can tell. It's, it's, 
it's not coming from a Pentecostal idea, Baptist idea, or any other church idea. This is literally what the Bible is saying. And so it's I'm compelled to share this with you so that when you read the Bible, you're not scratching head thinking, oh, 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 to be honest, I don't know what he's talking about. And then get put off of reading your Bible. Because if you're reading something you can't understand it, why would you want to go back and read it? And as much as we respect and reverence God's word, it's still... <laughs> If you don't understand it, it's not going to really make you feel inclined to read it because you'll feel rubbish. You'll probably go, oh, maybe I'm too stupid, maybe I'm too thick, or maybe I'm not close to God, maybe I'm not a good enough Christian to understand it. But none of them things are true, unless you really are out of God's will, and then the Bible will become a bit of a mystery to you because you won't be able to hear from God if you're living in sin and practicing sin. Um, it'll be like your light switches off, and then you have to get out of that sin, repent, and then get back into reading the Bible, then things will make more sense again. So the whole purpose of these readings is, so that when I read this and it sounds double Dutch, <laughs> it can be made easier to understand without taking away or adding anything to it. So we see here, verse 7 now, Paul was saying he was made a minister by God's grace, by the power that was given to him, working in him, and he considered himself to be the very least of all saints. Perhaps he, he considered himself to be the least of the, of the apostles and of the saints because he wasn't there when Jesus died on the cross and he wasn't there during the physical ministry of Christ in, in a follower capacity. Okay, We know Paul would have been alive when Jesus was walking the earth and in his ministry, but he wasn't following Jesus. He wasn't one of the 12 disciples. So therefore that would make him feel more inferior and more like, well, I'm, I'm the least. But then later on it says, or earlier on, I think it might be Corinthians, it says, though I'm the least of all the apostles, I'm not, I, I do know as much as they do. Because whereas the apostles that walk the earth, they learn from Jesus verbally and physically by being his physical presence, Paul the apostle learned about the gospel through revelation, or a revelation, a revealing from the mind of God directly into Paul into his uh, mind and spirit and so he goes on to say uh, verse 9 to reveal for all people what is the fellowship and the mystery which from the beginning of the ages had been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ and I'm repeating that verse again but bear with me verse 10 so that now the manifold wisdom manifold means many uh, manifold it's not like a manifold in the car but a manifold is like many Okay, um, you might hear people say twofold, tenfold, fivefold, sixfold, etc. Um, so that now the manifold wisdom or the many aspects of God's wisdom might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which He completed in Jesus Christ our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confidence and access through faith in Him. Therefore, I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulations and troubles for you, which is your glory. And Paul did go through a lot, didn't he? He went through a lot of stuff. And he just asks that we do not get overly troubled. He asks the church at Ephesus more specifically not to get really overly troubled about what he's going through, not to lose heart and to just know that he's going to be all right. God's going to work it all out for him. Uh, verse 14, for this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would give you, according to the riches of his glory, power to be strengthened by his spirit in the inner man, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend and understand with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And this is a prayer. Yeah, I, I use this prayer in my prayers at night. I pray um, this prayer, and I, pr I pray it in my own words, and other prayers that Paul prayed in Colossians and so forth. And what Paul's praying here is that God will strengthen us in our spirit, in our inner man, give us that inward strength in our spirit. When our strength of flesh fails, when our strength of mind fails, that inward man, the spirit man inside us, 
is strengthened. And that is where we come into you just sheer will, willpower. Just go through it. Just get get through it. Go through it. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, being rooted and grounded in love. Praying for us to be rooted and grounded in love, uh, because that's important as Christians, obviously, to walk in love and to have love as our foundation of our walk with God. <clears throat> and be able to comprehend and understand the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge. Um, and being filled with all the forms of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or imagine, according to the power that worketh in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And we do, I, I think you've probably heard that verse used a lot as well. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or imagine, according to his power that works in us. We know that God can do, if we ask God, to help us, to, to do something for us, as we as we call upon him in humility and in faith, that he's able to do even more than we can imagine. And I know my wife, my family, myself, we've prayed for things, and then it's been, uh, whoa, 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 this is, <laughs> this is even more than I imagined, okay? And, and it came through us just praying and just asking God, saying, look, we need your help, uh, this is the situation we're in and we just come to you and pray let your will be done in our lives and work this out for us and in the meantime we're going to get on with living for God and let God take care of the rest of it and he is able to do that for you and for me and for anyone as we come to him in faith, humility and in love okay so that's uh, Ephesians chapter 3 I uh, hope you got something from that. Please leave comments, subscribe to my channel, and share my videos with whoever you feel may be blessed by this. And um, thanks to all those who are supporting this channel. Keep supporting it, yeah? Um, it's, it's very important uh, to me and to other people who are watching as well that we continue this. God bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.